So in this video I will display how to create a Panasonic driver bundle from scratch um, using all uh, tools available for download. The first tool is a driver download tool uh, that's r uh, available right off of panasonic.com slash toughbook slash support. You can uh, download that tool from there. And I'm just going to go ahead and download all of the raw drivers um, for that particular model that I'm building the bundle for, which in this case is a 31 Mark III standard uh, slash performance model. So once I get all the drivers downloaded, it actually downloads to the desktop. Then I'm going to open the deployment workbench, which is a free download from Microsoft. You as well need to install Windows ADK along with that. I'm going to go ahead and just open up a blank share. There's nothing in this share, so you can just do a new share if you don't have one already. And go to the out of box. And I'm just using this as a tool to sift through all the driver folders for me and grab just the necessary files out of those uh, raw driver downloads uh, that I pulled off using the driver download tool. Alright, so I'm going to open up that directory where I downloaded the drivers and I'm going to import the drivers into MDT into a uh, custom folder there that I produced call it whatever you like and I'm just going to bring in all the drivers that that I know are plug-and-play drivers so ones that have INF and sys type drivers in the directories so some of the more obvious ones is the chipset the um, dynamic power perf performance monitor. Uh, we have also the fingerprint and um, the hockey driver. All those are INF drivers and the real reason I do this is to is to cut down the space needed for these driver bundles. This, signif this process significantly decreases the total space of the bundle. Um, it literally goes from roughly one and a half gig this particular bundle down to around 500 meg I believe um, so it, it's a huge savings um, so here I'm just I'm, I'm looking at the p-install so I can isolate the exact driver folder where which contains the driver for that particular model and I'm just gonna import that so anytime I could do that obviously I'm gonna do that to save even more space and um, it also saves on time as well so when it's running the installer it's only looking through a couple of drivers versus dozens of drivers that wouldn't apply to that system. So this takes a little while. I'm I'm fast forwarding through a couple of these so it may appear faster than it is on your side when you're actually going through this process. Alright, so that was the last driver I just imported there. And now I'm just going to look at the imported drivers and delete all of the architectures that we're not after here. So there, there's a bunch of drivers that imported for 32-bit architecture, so I'm going to go ahead and tell MDT to delete those. Alright, 
great. So now we have a small list of drivers here uh, that we want to import. So we're just going to go over here and create a folder to store all those drivers. We'll call it 00, zero underscore plug and play. And the reason we have 00, zero in the front is because we want these to install first. A lot of other utilities and applications rely on those drivers to be in there for them to install properly. So we want to get that first in the process. And then we're going to go ahead and delete all the folders for the imported drivers we're handling now with um, the plug and play process versus uh, the installers. So we got 15 folders here we're deleting, which is a, a good amount of space there we just saved. So now we're going to go to our driver bundle site. You can grab that off of my signature, which you could see there. If you could pause it, grab that URL. It's an open URL. Anybody can access it. And I'm going to look for the plug and play drivers files. And I'm going to open those up with 7-zip. And I'm going to copy over the, the files I need, the DP install files. And then I'm going to go to my dummy deployment share, go to my out-of-box, copy all those drivers that I imported into Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. And I'm going to go ahead and place them in that plug-and-play drivers directory. Alright, so now I have my plug-and-play drivers uh, ice, uh, consolidated into one installer. Going to go ahead and delete these drivers because there's actually another set of drivers uh, that I want to install as well outside of the plug and play. The way plug and play works is it scans against the hardware of the machine first, and if there's a match, then it installs it. For these drivers, the LAN driver as well as um, the the port replicator driver, these would possibly not be available at the time of deployment. These are you, normally they sit on a docking station. So I want to have these install regardless of the hardware. So that I have a different package. It's called the install always driver package and it's the same exact procedure where I'm importing it to MDT, sifting out the drivers and then I'm I'm copying them over into this install always directory here. So it's just a different set of DP install files. Uh, like I said, the main thing is that those install always. The others install only if it finds matching hardware. All right, so we just copy over now our imported network drivers there. And those will get installed always, as it says. Last thing, we'll, we'll go in here and tell the common components, which is our middleware that we wanted to install right up against those um, plug-and-play drivers routines. Alright, now I'm going to jump back to the desktop and create a new folder. It's just called temp folder for now. And we're going to drop that created package with all of our customizations right into that folder. So now we have a temp folder off our desktop with the, the subfolder for all of our zip files. Now we're going to grab 7-zip uh, command line utility from that same website and as well as the prep drivers from that same website and drop it into that parent directory. So now we have that one folder with the subfolder with the zip files. All right, now we run the prep drivers and you can see it, it errored out saying that asset tag uh, wasn't uh, it's fully silent. So let's just get rid of that. We don't want that in there as well anyway. So. All right, we're going to rerun it, and now it says, all right, it looks like it's all good, and it start, starts doing the compression. All right, once it's done, it gives us a, a, a way to change the name of the bundle, and my naming convention is pretty simple. You could jump on uh, the Panasonic driver download site to get the all the possible prefixes, because this bundle will support the S and the U. So I put dash, mark level, dash, 
OS architecture. All right, so now that that's done, I'll go ahead and change that parent folder to the same name. And now we have a subfolder named accordingly and, and the parent folder named the same. So let's go back to our download site, go to latest bundle files folder, and we're gonna grab the install XE as well as the change log. Drop it in that parent folder again. And the same thing with the change log. And now we're just going to create something I normally create in there called a bundle change log. Which just gives, if we want to change this bundle later on, it's easy just to go in here, update it so we have an idea of what was changed and so on. So this is the first revision. So we're going to go ahead and wipe out the file and date it and put in here that it's the first revision. Alright, so that's done. And the bundle is practically complete. We could actually run it now with just running the install XE. That would actually work, but to clean it up and, and make it a single file, easy to download and upload, we use the 7-zip self-extractable creator, which is in that same location. We're going to save it to our desktop. You can save it wherever you're you know, performing deployment of this development, I should say and extract it and we're going to open up that folder, that extracted folder go to the tools and then we're going to drag that created package right on top of the build XE batch and that's going to do all the all the hard work for us, it's going to build that large.exe file and it'll put the icon and everything. So that's it. We got a complete bundle ready for sharing.